In our Sunrise Smart Start, two people are dead after a violent weekend in Rochester. A 23-year-old was killed after a double shooting. It happened outside the Family Dollar on North Goodman Street last night. Police responded around 9 o'clock. Officers found a 23-year-old man shot in the upper body. He later died at the hospital. Police say a 31-year-old man was also shot. His injuries are non-life-threatening. And earlier in the weekend, a 21-year-old was killed in a shooting on Saturday. Police say Jeremy Hamilton Jr. was shot in the area of Harris Street and Avenue A. Officers located Hamilton Jr. at the corner of St. Paul and Clifford. He later died at the hospital. Police believe this shooting is drug-related. No suspects are in custody. War violence. Rochester police investigating another shooting from Saturday at the intersection of Selena Street and Chai Lai Avenue. They responded around 5 o'clock, finding a 33-year-old man shot in the upper body. He was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. And police are also investigating an incident where gunfire hit a house on Stanfield Terrace early Sunday morning. Officers say three adults were in the house at the time, but nobody was hurt. No one has been arrested, and anyone with information is asked to call 911. A man stabbed in Rochester over the weekend as well. Officers responded to Manor Parkway around 6 a.m. Saturday. Investigators say the victim here, a 39-year-old man, told them he was stabbed in the stomach by a stranger. He was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. There are no suspects in custody. Well, according to the Rochester Police Department's open data portal, there have been 19 homicides this year in Rochester, 151 since 2020, including 81 last year, the deadliest in Rochester history. That's equal to more than one homicide a week since January of 2020. And with hundreds more shootings in the same time frame, community members and first responders alike have been grappling with this violence. Rochester is wrong, you feel me? Rochester is a disappointment, you feel me? Us kids nowadays, we got to walk around with guns, you feel me? Because we're we, we afraid of dying, you feel me? I'm only 17, I've been shot twice, you feel me? I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of dying, you feel me? Now, 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 I, now all these other people that take care of the kids, they don't got to worry about that, you feel me? It's, it's us young kids out here, and us, and us other people that's out here banging, you feel me? Doing all these gang stuff, you feel me? And people just looking out, trying to look out for us and, try, and just trying to kill us, you feel me? It continues to be a toll on our officers and resources, manpower between fire, EMS, the hospital staff, policing. Uh, it's hard to contain these scenes and it draws a lot of resources to try to do a thorough investigation to see what led up to this. On the issue of gun violence, the Biden administration could announce a new position on ghost guns today. The privately manufactured firearms don't have serial numbers. That makes them difficult to trace. Senator Schumer made a statement yesterday urging the administration to classify ghost gun kits as firearms. We just heard a few days ago of a terrible, terrible and tragic death of a 16-year-old teenager snuffed out when shot by another teen, most likely using a ghost gun. That was awful. But ghost guns are nothing new. Alongside the ghost gun announcement, President Biden is expected to nominate former U.S. Attorney Steve Dettelbach as the new director for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Well, a woman is in critical condition after a car crash on Jefferson Road in Henrietta. At around 6 p.m. yesterday, sheriff's deputies found a woman trapped in her SUV. They say the 55-year-old woman from Rochester tried to make a left turn onto Jefferson Road when she was struck by a tractor trailer. The car was hit on the driver's side and sent into a telephone pole. The driver of the tractor trailer, a 54-year-old male, was not hurt. An investigation is currently ongoing. The Rochester Fire Department is investigating a house fire on Clifford Avenue yesterday afternoon. Officials say they received multiple calls around 3.30 reporting smoke coming from the windows and roof. Fire crews responded, then put out the fire, performing multiple searches of the home. The fire was under control in 10 minutes and nobody was inside. The search for a missing 11-month-old continues. That 11-month-old pictured here, Iris Chidster. U.S. Marshals say her mother, Adrienne Marion, is a fugitive and could be in the Webster area. Marion is wanted in West Virginia for violating a court order. She was last seen in Pennsylvania and parts of western New York, Dunkirk, and Fredonia. Anyone with information should call 304-623-0486 or 911. 
Well, happening today, Shadad Algaithi and James Hampton, the two Rochester uh, store clerks, rather, accused of raping a teenage girl, are due to be arraigned. Court documents say the victim was locked inside that store and raped in a back room. Algaithi is a registered sex offender uh, stemming from a conviction last year. Four more victims have come forward with allegations against Algaithi. Well, James, uh, if someone wants to take a morning walk, is today a good day for that? I think so, yeah. It's certainly, it's a bundle up type of morning, uh, but maybe the good part about this morning, I am looking for clouds. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm still looking. I don't see any clouds. <laughs> We've got blue skies. I'm still looking. <laughs> uh, right, yes. Uh, now, you don't have to look too far this afternoon. Yes, we'll see an increase in clouds, but you walk out that door and you want sunglasses. Uh, so I think the chill really isn't that bad when you see how beautiful the sky is. Let's enjoy today as we kick off this Monday bus stop forecast and the eight day at the end of the show. Mark Kelly. All right, James. Uh, Carly Simon said there might be some clouds in your coffee. Check there. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let's check the roads with your sunrise traffic and no accidents on 390, 490 or 590. If you are heading out the door right now, should be a pretty good ride in. To Washington, experts say there is a growing risk of Americans facing a recession as inflation continues to impact the country. Washington correspondent Basil John reports as the Biden administration promises it's doing everything it can to combat inflation. Good morning. Economists are unsure about what the future holds when it comes to inflation, but some believe Americans should prepare for the worst. I think we were too slow to pick up on how rapidly the economy was recovering. Former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers told NBC's Meet the Press that the U.S. may see a recession soon. When we've had inflation above four and we've had unemployment below four, essentially always since World War II, that's been followed by a recession within the next two years. Summers does not agree with some of the economic decisions Democrats pushed, like passing billion dollar spending bills. The economy has a very strong basis. But on Fox News Sunday, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said the Biden administration is monitoring their economic data to combat inflation. The costs are too high. That's how people across the country, of course, experience inflation. And we need to take steps to address that. Some of those steps include lower health care costs for families and extending the pause on students. And loans. Even as our economy is continuing to recover, we're reducing costs. Uh, we ought to pay our debt. But Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell criticized the student loan pause and promises it will only contribute to the economic damage. This administration just can't seem to get their act together on the economy. The federal government will release March inflation numbers this week. Reporting in Washington, I'm Basil John. Thank you, Basil. And Deutsche Bank was the first Wall Street bank to predict a recession. It forecasts the S&P 500 to slide by 20% next year. Well, now from around the state, the New York state budget finally passed Saturday morning, nine days late. It comes with a record price tag of $220 billion. A new bill stadium, suspended gas tax, and alcohol to go all included. We heard from local lawmakers over the weekend about how the budget goes further. If you have a child uh, ages 5 through 17, they will see an increase, depending on your household income, uh, of tax rebates uh, so that you will have more cash in your pockets. There's a little bit of money in there to help offset the potential overtime cost to all the farmers, reducing it from 60 to, to 40 hours. And, and I really think they're going to do that. On the subject of bail reform, the budget does give judges more power to set bail if a defendant poses a threat to another person or has a history of gun use. A manhole explosion in Times Square sent hundreds of people scrambling for cover. It happened just before 7 last night and officials say it was caused by a cable failure. Witnesses reported hearing a huge bang followed by sirens. Then they saw fire and smoke coming out of manholes. The fire department said elevated levels of carbon monoxide were found in one building. So far no word on any injuries and no power outages were reported. Three Starbucks locations in Ithaca voting to unionize Friday. This comes after locations in Rochester and Buffalo won unionization efforts as well. The total number of unionized Starbucks now across the country is up to 16 locations. Monroe County's three golf courses will open for the 2022 season tomorrow, according to an update on the county's golf website. The county operates three golf courses, Durand Eastman, Genesee Valley, and Churchville. 
Tea times are open to the public, and for more on how or where to book, you can head to rochesterfirst.com. A lot of people have that itch after the Masters. Here's what they're talking about at the water cooler this morning. It wrapped up yesterday with an impressive performance from the world's number one player. Scotty Scheffler led the entire weekend and shot under par in every round, capturing the year's first major and the coveted green jacket to go with it. Scheffler's 10 under par total, three shots better than Rory McIlroy, who finished second after a record time final round 64. This was Scheffler's fourth victory since February and his first major victory as well. And we mentioned it earlier, Tiger Woods finished all four rounds of the Masters as well. Uh, well over par, well out of the running, but the fact that he was able to play it all, a major accomplishment for him as well. Great stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Rory did everything he could to try to win the tournament. Uh, an unbelievable round by him, but yeah. it wasn't mm -hmm. enough. Yeah, classic example of too little, too late. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, not true with your forecast, though, right? Uh, yeah, no, definitely uh, going to be coming through bus stop forecast. The sun is out this morning, uh, so you see those 30s and you think, oh, it's going to be cold. Yeah, sure, going to be cold for the next couple hours, but we really warm up. We've got 60s by this afternoon, so much more comfortable. We'll finish with the eight-day forecast here uh, by Tuesday. Uh, we've got numbers uh, a little bit cooler as there will be some rain showers around in the morning. And then we bump up. I've got a couple of 70s here, both Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, and that comes with some cooler air by the weekend. But still, let's enjoy the next couple of days. They do look good. And we will, James. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great day.